Grace, the platform is yours. Um, can you see my? Yes, my, I can. Okay. Um, I'm having a bad hair day, so I have made provisions for that in my next slide to try and okay. live through that way. All right. So, thank you. Okay. Um, my topic is applying PyCross and 16S RNA. Um, so, yeah, I am a I was a postdoctoral fellow at UNISA. I have completed that stint of fellowship, um, working with the Institute for the Development of um, Energy for African Sustainability. So our focus is primarily energy and um, my personal research focus is trying to apply omics um, into industrial processes and environmental mitigation and remediation. So the paper that I will be talking on is already published. It was published on the 7th of October, 2021. Um, I would suggest that if, because there, there is one table that is quite large and that's the main focus that I didn't put on the slide. So if um, anyone would want to follow through, they might download it, it's open access, and then we can talk through it while I present late on that aspect. Um, the introduction to this um, just follows that we have looked at the environment and we have looked at specific areas of problem and one of them that resonates with is the large quantities of animal manure that is produced globally every year. And although some of it is used for biogas production, quite a significant amount of it is present in the environment and it also leads to um, environmental problems and so many other consequences. One, the method in which um, it's being processed um, in some places is the use of anaerobic digestion. Um, in anaerobic digestion, the primary thing they do is to sub select substrates. At this uh, present moment, the most successfully used substrates are the various animal manure but they also come with their challenges. And the biggest one being that um, the variation in these substrates tend to lead to um, varied product yield. And ultimately for any one who wants to go into large scale fermentation, the goal is to produce as much of the final product as possible. Another problem is that before they begin the process of um, biogas digestion, the chemical engineers that are usually the ones involved in this process tend to focus on using what they refer to as biomethane potential to estimate the quantity of biogas that um, a substrate will be able to yield. Now, the problem with using this method is that the microorganisms are not put into consideration when they are carrying out this process. So in addressing this problem, we decided that um, PyCrust might be an option. Now, PyCrust usually allows us the database and the other ancillary functions allows us to be able to characterize the functionality of microorganisms. And if we know this functionality, it is possible for us then to manipulate the physical chemical um, factors that might be reducing yield, which is what the most chemical engineers tend to focus upon rather than the microorganism. So the aim on objective of this um, project was to provide a cheap methodology that would utilize the trend in metagenomics to improve co-digestion of substrates during anaerobic digestion for the production of biogas, in this case, specifically biomethane. 
um, and in this way improve yield in biodigesters. So we went about it by using predictive analysis that we obtained from PyCrust and the KIG database. And um, what we threw in was our 16 S targeted sequences of the bacteria that was isolated from the manure. And then we implemented further a correlative analysis and used that um, correlative analysis to interpret on the basis of empirical and theoretical information that is usually available for most of the microorganisms that we got. Uh, in the end, we would, it was with this, we were able to determine a co-digestion strategy for this particular batch. And in so doing, we also believe that this can become a routine-based thing that can be done at any point in time. We were working from the premise of understanding that anaerobic digestion is achieved through sequential enzymatic degradation that is usually facilitated by the um, rumen-derived um, autochotonous microorganisms. So in other words, once you collect the manure, there are already organisms that are resident in it. And when you throw them into the biodigester, they continue the process of anaerobic digestion. And that these organisms, they produce enzymes that are capable of various activities, including cellulitic, amylolytic, proteolytic, and metagenic activities. So collectively, when these enzymes are functioning within a biochemical pathway, the steps that are followed is hydrolysis, acidogenesis, acetogenesis, and methanogenesis. Each of these steps is rate limited by the presence or absence of metabolite produced in the previous step. So if we don't produce enough in one step, it means that the microorganisms in the next step will not be able to function. The end result is that the biogas that will be produced, the yield will be low. So we have the understanding that the group of microorganisms that are present there actually produce the enzymes that facilitate the breakdown of the substrate and vis-a-vis -vis the metabolites. And we also know that acetogenesis and acidogenesis provides metabolites that are used by the end stage microorganisms, which are methanogens. Um, methanogens are facultative anaerobes. So we already know that their biochemical pathway for energy production only yields two ATP. So their reliance on ready-made substrate is what actually allows them to function properly. So we also then know that any, a reduction in the previous groups will definitely affect the final yield. Our methodology followed the feedstock characterization. So the feedstock that we obtained from nine different um, sites, which were biological replications, and that was what we were aiming for, were taken through the process of characterization to check for the presence of the elemental um, composition in terms of sulfur, carbon, and the rest of them. The same samples were also submitted for molecular characterization, and then it was followed by sequencing. So molecular characterization basically extracted the DNA, and that was what was submitted for sequencing uh, to allow us to see the microbiome that is present in the sample. So it, this was then followed by the bioinformatic analysis, which allowed us to gain an insight into the taxonomy of this microorganism. Further than we carried out functional gene predictions using um, the uh, bioinformatic data that we had. And then this was followed by the correlation analysis of the genius at the genius level for the microorganisms. These are some of the results. We carried out the BMP, which is the regular thing that most chemical engineers would do before they start the process of digestion. And we used various um, approaches. We used various approaches to analyze um, and carry out this biomethane uh, potential calculation. So we use the DeLong, the Boswell, and the Fogas approach, and they yielded results that were very um, close to each other, but different for the um, different organisms and different manure. 
This is a taxonomic identification, and this was very important for us for the pie crust um, predictions that we carried out as we based our characterization on this um, taxonomic identified organisms within the different samples that we had. The prediction classification looked at um, specific functions and majorly at, we looked at fructose, mannose metabolism, amino um, sugar and nucleotide sugar metabolism, phospho, um, phospho um, transferase system, starch and sucrose metabolism. We used LDA and LFC um, in this particular area of functional characterization as well as then we went on to also carry out the significant, um, looked at the significant features um, highlighted with the LDA. We will, you will notice the quite high standard deviations. And I know that the previous speaker had spoken about it, but we were working with varied biological replicated samples from different environments. We will later talk on that as well. So the pie crust approach was then used to evaluate the functional potential of the microbial communities, but with a specific focus on the biogas production. And then based on this, we obtained 135 predictions, um, the key autologies, and 36 were definitely related to anaerobic digestion and acidogenesis or acetogenesis. And this is still um, one of the extended error bars that actually highlighted the different me um, metabolisms that we focused upon and how varied they, uh, they were with the different samples. So the correlation analysis that we carried out, which can be found, it's quite broad. That's why um, I couldn't put it into the um, table, but the classification for this particular correlation analysis, we focused on three major um, areas. We looked at pathways that were related for these microorganisms to growth and synthesis and the degradation of growth metabolites. So in that way, we were looking specifically at the tyrosine, glycine, serine, um, thionine, and the rest of those. And then we also looked at pathways that were related to complex lignocellulose degradation because we understood that the, micro, the microorganisms functioned majorly to help in the degradation of this um, lignocellulose in the rumen. And also in this particular the biogas digestion, it also functions for hydrolysis to break down the complex compounds that are uh, found within the structure of the lignocellulose. Then thirdly, we focused on pathways with direct relationship to acetogenesis and acidogenesis. And um, this is related to the transformation to produce the short chain fatty acids that onwardly are then used in the production of biogas. So with this, um, the first thing I, I, I mentioned previously about the reason why we needed to include LDA and LFC within it, it's because when you go into the key database, it is quite broad and it's quite extensive. So the only way to narrow it down to be able to focus on the specific um, um, study you are looking at is to um, use this particular uh, method of statistical analysis. And then, like we said, all of the, um, the features identified from the key pathways, such as the fructose, mannose uh, metabolism, were directly linked to the first stage of breakdown, which is hydrolysis, and that must happen, the initial breakdown of these complex compounds to produce substrates. There were inferences that we could immediately make from the microorganisms that were found in the horse GIT versus the cow and the pig GIT. And one of the most um, important things that we picked up was that activity was highest in the horse GIT as compared to the cow and the pig. So it meant that um, the horse GIT will produce higher enzymatic capacity to degrade faster. 
What this implies in terms of co-digestion will mean that if you are dealing with this um, different manure, you would want to increase the ratio of the horse manure versus the cow manure to be able to achieve the end result of higher yield for your biogas. <clears throat> Further, we also observed for this particular sample that the pig manure contained a lot of Cycrobacter um, genius um, organisms. And this was important to note because most digesters, and we have this experience because within the group as well, we do, um, uh, we do install digesters around the country. So we had picked up on this, that during winter, the performance of the digesters are usually very poor as compared to summer months. So, but with the implication that there is a presence of cycrobacter, it is possible that during that period, we would then enhance the yield by increasing the amount of pig manure after we have analyzed to ensure that there are still the cycrobacter um, um, microorganisms that are present. But we also note, and literature was able to back that up, that more often than not, this can be found in the GIT. And it also has to do with the physiology of the pig and the, the need for it to be able to maintain its um, metabolic activities during the um, winter months. Noting that the pig naturally is, has a lot of fat on it. So we will most often find the Cycrobacter microorganism within its GIT. So the implication is at any point in time that um, winter sets in, we can use this to help ameliorate the effect that low temperature brings to metabolism and the production of ATP um, in the um, biodigesters. Significantly also, although that was not the focus of our, uh, our study, we observed a lot of uh, pathogenic microorganism, which essentially highlights the reasoning behind use, the use of anaerobic digestion process to um, eliminate as much as possible this pathogenic and sometimes zoonotic uh, microorganisms that might be present before the manure is even used as a condi soil conditioner or as a fertilizer. So in other words, um, the best way to be able to reduce these levels would actually be to carry out anaerobic digestion. The reason is not far-fetched in the sense that during anaerobic digestion, the the um, temperature rises sometimes as high as 60, 65. And some of these microorganisms will definitely um, die in this process or um, during succession. So I put in some caveats for this particular study. Um, I think it was based on the questions by the reviewer. So I felt that it was necessary to also point that out here. Uh, we used biological replicates, and so that is why you would notice the very high um, standard deviation. I was very glad that the previous presenters had highlighted on that. So the microbial profile composition for this study is only lent to two particular changes, but these changes were useful to be able to make decisions around co-digestion strategies for this specific manure, meaning that going forward, you would um, it will be necessary to carry out such metagenomic analysis and pie cross um, functional characterization before you can make any assertion. So it can, this particular study cannot be used as a generalization. The purpose of this study was to show that we can actually use pie crust for industrial, especially biogas production decision making and not just as an academic exercise because it will help us better for the process kinetics. So um, the study motivates for the routine analysis using this particular method. So um, in the end, we believe that for viable commercial process, it might be necessary to include a routine evaluation of this manual to reduce this, um, the issue around yields that has also been a contributing factor to the um, the slow acceptance of biogas production in most areas of the, of the country and even globally. Um, I wish to acknowledge my funders. Um, this project was supported by um, TIA and um, as well as the Department of Science and Innovations. 
Um, I also wish to extend gratitude to Mr. Waze Nor Mohammed, my student, who actually helped immensely in the research um, um, aspects, and also the Dr. James Fox, who also helped in the scientific content analysis. Um, data is available on NCBI uh, repository as well as the PyCross um, repository. I'm open to questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Grace. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat that has been posted. Um, are there any live questions that you would like to ask Dr. Grace? Anybody, um, any of our delegates perhaps? Um, there's one, uh, Dr. Grace, your analysis for the microbial consortium shown in the phylogenetic tree do not really show the uh, methogens. Can you explain what happened? I did not. If all of us are familiar, it, it was also a question that was brought up by the reviewer. All of us are very familiar with the costs of carrying out metagenomics. And if we are, when we carry out metagenomics and we include metanogenes, then what it implies is an increased cost. If you are looking at setting it up, not as an academic exercise, but rather as a routine, we do have the metagenomic, um, we do have the metagenomic data for metanogens. But in this particular case, the functionality of um, the metanogens is based primarily on acetogenesis and acidogenesis. If those don't happen, that the only thing that those people are, um, the only thing that the microorganisms are functioning for is the conversion of those metabolites into biogas or biomethane. So it's a rate limiting step and it's moot. I don't know if I make sense to the person who asked the question. It is moot okay. to consider it, but we are looking at it from a cost perspective that we are proposing this to individuals that would like to go into large scale um, biogas production okay. just as an academic exercise. Thank, thank you for that. I hope that answers your uh, question, Abimbola. Um, so there are no more questions in the chat. Thank you so much, Dr. Grace. You can thank go you. ahead and stop your share.